Hi, today's topic is belt selection made easy. The four steps to selecting a custom leather belt. This can be very confusing for a lot of people. There are a lot of choices. I've had another video that talk about quality versus price, what you're looking for, what you're getting there. I have other videos talking about the difference in the, the types of designs on the belts, what's the difference between embossed versus stamped, the differences in you know prices and things like that. So those are some of the first decisions you need to make. But now you've you've kind of picked the place you're going to buy the belt. But now you need to come down to the customization, the, you know, the thing specifically for what you are looking for, narrowing down your choices. So there are four basic things you need to uh, think about, which is the width of the belt you want, whether you want it to have a design or be plain, what shape and style buckle you want on it, and what the length needs to be. So those are the things I'm going to talk about today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jan Hibbard, and I've been making handmade leather goods since 1977. Handmade leather belts have always been one of my best sellers uh, and continue to be to this day. So today, that's what we're going to discuss. So the first thing you need to think about is the width of the belt. What are you going to wear it with? Now, for a long time, inch and three quarter inch, or inch, Belts at inch and three quarter wide were my most popular. I make belts in all widths for people of all sizes, inch and three quarter, or actually even a couple two inch belts, right down to half inch belts. So you need to think about what you're going to wear it with. For a long time, the inch and three quarter was my most popular one, especially for rugged men's work belts, things like that. But then they narrowed the loops down and a lot of pants didn't fit these. Now things have changed again. So most things like jeans, for especially men's jeans, I'm not sure about women's jeans. So you want to try your belt loops. Oh, these are women's pants. Fits through fine. So you want to, you know, your average pants. If you were dressed to your pants, they're probably not going to accommodate a belt that wide. So you're going to want something a little bit narrower, uh, which is usually stand, most standard sizes are inch and a half and inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter being the little bit more dressy width, sometimes an inch even, and inch and a half being the most common all around width. So that's the first choice. The width, think about what you get. If it's for a woman's belt, are you wearing it on top of dresses? Do you want it to be narrow? Is it really just for decoration? Whereas for men, you're wearing it to hold up your pants. That's where, you know, maybe a little wider, things like that. So, you, you know, you want to think about that. Is your first step. So the width. Second thing you want to think about, and this is where it gets a little bit harder, whether you want it to be plain, meaning without a design, or whether you want it to have a tool design. You need to, you know, decide on one of those. If you're picking plain, you have to pick colors. If you're picking designs, I'll give you some other options on there. So if you're picking plain, means solid color belts again. Same quality belt, just in different colors. These belts are hand colored, you know, I dyed from the factory. And again, these may not show up great on the camera. So you can also look at my website and so forth pictures. Tan is my lightest color. Then you have medium brown. I'm trying to show them so you can see the variations in color. Chocolate is the next one. Then I have dark brown. It's almost a dark brown. It's pretty close to a black. It's a little softer, maybe. This reddish brown, chestnut, and then black. So again, if I put the black and the dark brown together, not a whole lot of difference. The chestnut, you can see, is redder than the other browns. No. So again, look on my website. You can see the different colors there. But those are your choices in colors. If you notice, this one has lines on the side. That's something that's also a possibility. Sometimes I have the lines on the side. If you, you know, don't ask for the lines, and I'm not going to do them. But those can be done on any belt. Um, I think it dresses it up a little bit. So that's, I wasn't going to go there. Because again, that's making too many choices. So that's plain belts. If you're interested in those, again, you can look at my website, logcabinleatherbyjan.com under belts, then you can look at solid color belts. If you're picking a tooled belt, now it gets hotter. 
But first, what I want you to think about is the color of clothing that you wear. If you go into a tool design, that means you like the little bit fancier things. It is going to dress up your clothes. My father, I wish he was alive today, was such a sharp dress that he wore these fancy belts and he felt it. He looked really snazzy, stylish. He loved colors. He hated things dull. So he loved these belts because they, you know, traditionally belts were just a solid color. You know, they didn't have a lot of design. So he he loved my belts. Um, and he was my salesman, <laughs> um, which is why they were a good seller from the start. So anyways, now you've got to think about colors. If you wear a lot of jeans, are your main pants then something with a blue accent in it is going to look beautiful it's going to you know it's going to bring out the blue in it bring out the blue in your clothing if you wear a lot of black or brown you know some other colors now i have this color these color belts and i have a few in this which is called an antique black and this color is kind of nice because it goes with both it's kind of got a blackish brown tone i usually accent it with black or brown which makes it really nice. It has some design to it, but it's not, you know, if you don't want it to stand out too much. Some people like the designs, but this might be a little bit too flashy. So something like that with the antique colors is a good alternative. You know, again, then there's other choices with that. But again, it really is kind of a nice belt to go with black or brown depending on what you wear I hope that shows on the camera the camera's behind me so I can't really see it um, things like that if you wear khaki pants you know a lot of these again with that lighter accent might look nice you know it's all a matter of personal taste but a lot of these again I would think about the colors now for me I wear, and see my basement isn't heated, so I have multi layers. I wear mostly clothes with this color. So the belts that I'm drawn to, why are the ones with this color in it? Now this color looks nice on a lot, all my family. Men and women in my family all look good with this kind of color. So a little bit of that on a belt really jazzes things up. And so forth. So the belts that I have have that turquoise color in it. And again, tend to have a little bit more, maybe the kind of what I would call an Indian looking print to it. But again, with blues, that goes nice with brown. So, you know, it has that blackish antique color. So it really, I would think about the clothes you wear. So in picking the design, think about the colors that are in it. If you wanted to request special colors, again, that's making it more difficult. But, like, you know, for a woman who's looking for something that has purple in it, that can be done. People don't ask for that, that you know, so I don't have that many things with that. But it certainly can be done. So ask, I mean, I think my butterfly belt for a woman that has some purple in it. Purple, yellow, blue, red. You know, you can pick your own colors, too, if you want to. And the colors on the belt and how it's colored really make a difference in how the belt looks. That's a whole other story, <laughs> trying to make this less confusing. So number one was width. Number two was the design or solid. And then you have to think about the colors. Think about your wardrobe, things you're going to wear it with. Solid color belts. Again, you might want to think about the shoes and stuff you want to wear it with, what color they are, especially if it's, you know, for a dressier outfit, a suit, or, you know, to go to a wedding or something like that. You're trying to match it, things like that. Third choice is your buckle. You have a couple choices there, too. You have finish. You have nickel over brass or solid brass. Solid brass or, again, nickel over brass. So those are your two choices, whether you want gold or silver. They are all center bar buckles, which means the belt is attached to the middle of the belt, the buckle rather. And so instead of having a leather loop, the, buckle, the belt goes under the buckle itself, which acts instead of having a need, the need for a loop there. If that makes any sense. So the, the chromey finished or the brass finish. Now, if you're allergic to metal, the, the chrome finish is not a good finish because it is a nickel finish. So if you have nickel allergies, that wouldn't work. 
I know I do. So that would not be good for me, although any metal would bother me. Uh, so then your brass is your other option. If you have your own buckles and you want to put them on, that's an option too. Again, you want to look at the width of the buckle. Most fancy buckles from the 70s and stuff would take the inch and three quarter or the inch and a half. Most people use the same buckles for either one. But if it's narrower than that or whatever, you need to make, you know, you need to make sure you get a belt that will fit. Uh, next is a shape. So you've got a rectangle shape. You've got a horseshoe shape. You've got an oval shape. Now, all these belts, obviously, the narrower the belt, the narrower the buckle. They are all the buckles made to fit the size of. So there's a oval one, one of three quarter, you know, they're made to fit the buckle. So they get smaller, obviously it's the buckle gets smaller, but the same shapes. So those are your choices there for the buckle. So that's number three width, then design, then buckle. Now the length, that may be the hardest part for some people. If you uh, don't, <laughs> if you, if the belt's for you, you don't, pant sizes does not work. First of all, women's size, like size 12, that means nothing to me. Or size 10, you know, I, and it, it depends on the makers. I can wear all different size pants. It depends on who makes them. My body is the same size, but the pants are, are very different. You know, size 8 to a size 12, there's a big difference there. Means are the manufacturer. So that's not accurate. For men, pant size is not accurate either. It's generally off by at least four inches, meaning they need four inches bigger than what you're saying. So you don't want to go by that. If you have an old belt, you want to look at that. You want to find the hole that's most worn. So usually where the buckle is wearing on the belt and see this belt hasn't been worn for a long time. There's usually more of a stress mark across it. As again, this belt, I believe this, this hole was the last <laughs> hole that was worn on and see it's getting too short. And the, the hole should not go that close to the end. But my husband li did not like his belt to have much of a tab on it. And he got fatter and he couldn't wear it anymore. <laughs> so in any event, that's what you're looking for. Kind of the stress mark that. That's where they wear it. You want to measure from that hole to the end of the belt here. That's going to be the new hole on the middle on the new belt, which should not be this close to the end. It's going to be more over here, two holes on either side, so that no matter where you're wearing it, it's going to most likely go through this hole there, your loop there, even if it's on the the, close, the closest hole to the end. It should still fit through that tab, at least some, like that. And then have you a couple inches, so it's not going to stick out too much if you're on your center hole. That's basically how I, I size the belts. I do have more of that on my website, you know, how to do that more specifically. If it's better for you to you know, read the information, you can check it out there. So those are the four things you need to think about. The width, again, first of all, because if it doesn't fit through the belt loops, it's not going to be any good. Second of all is the design, whether you want solid, whether you want to design the colors you wear, what you think is going to go best with the clothing you have and that kind of thing and give you, you know, most use and wear, things like that. Next is a buckle. What finish is better for you? Again, think of what if you're what is color jewelry you wear. I know my my sister only wears silver or rather gold jewelry, so she would pick a brass buckle. Other people wear either. You know, men sometimes have a preference, or if you have watch in a certain color, you know, think about what matters to you. It's your choices. <laughs> think about those. So the uh, buckle shape and then the finish. Shape really, as far as comfort, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. It really is a matter of personal style. And then you have the length, obviously, made to fit your body. Belts in all widths for people of all sizes. Um, I can do belts up to, you know, usually a 65 or so inch waist, sometimes longer. You know, so I can make a belt to fit you, no matter what size you need. That's Pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. Again, my website, logcabinleatherbyjan.com. You can check out I, you know, my blog and find out more about the belt sizing and the things I talked about today if you prefer to read rather than listen. <laughs> That's also an option. I join my email to keep up to date on other things I'm doing and shows and events and those such things that are going on. Uh, you, there's plenty of links to do that on my website as well. Again, website, logcabinleatherbyjan.com. There will be, will be a link below the video for that. 
And that's going to wrap it up by now. So I hope that makes it easier. Your four steps to getting a custom leather belt that's going to fit perfectly and last for years. Thank you very much. Have a great day.